give life. talking about in scripture, think about Peter. One of the stories we think about is Peter walking on water, right? Let me tell you something about Peter. I had a friend of mine years ago, he's in ministry and he came up to me and he said, Ben, I'm just like Peter. And he had just kind of messed up a little bit in his life. He had kind of slipped up, which we all do, right? But he'd come up to sit across from me so that we could talk. We were close friends so that we could hold each other accountable. And he looked at me and I'm always said, I'm just like Peter. And I said, why are you just like Peter? And he said, because Peter just kept messing up. Now, what I'm about to tell you is not something I advise to tell people, but we're real close friends. You know what I'm talking about? Like those close friends where you can look at each other and just call each other out. And this is what I said to him. It's not a good thing to say, but we're still friends. I said, let's call him, let's call him, not, I usually use the word Mark, but that's Mark, so not Mark. Let's say Luke. I said, Luke, you know why you're nothing like Peter? He goes, why? I said, because Peter actually did something. Think about it. We think about Peter and all too many of, too many of times we think about Peter when he walked out on the water that he fell and we think, oh, Peter, you had too little of faith. Let me tell you something. When Jesus came walking out on the water after feeding thousands, the rest of the disciples, probably along with Peter, started crying out to false gods, to gods of the sea and to the old gods before they worshiped their king because they were scared out of their minds. And when they found out it was Jesus, this is what Peter said. Peter said, Jesus, if that's really you, I would rather be on the water in the midst of the sea with my savior beside me than in a boat without him call me out on the water and Jesus said come and you know what there's only two people in this world I know have walked on water and that's just Peter and Jesus so he's in good company and I promise when he got back in that boat the rest of the disciples weren't going man Peter you had such little faith they were thinking I wish I would have done something and stepped out of this boat Think about Peter. So Jesus and the rest of the disciples are in the garden. He, Jesus is weeping his, literally blood is pouring out of him. He is sweating and crying because he knows before him comes death on a cross. And he's a human. A God brought to human form and he is scared out of his mind. And these soldiers come to take him away. The rest of the disciples kind of step back. And they don't mess up. But Peter did something that day. Peter went to that soldier, he grabbed his sword and he chopped off the soldier's ear. And let me tell you right now, that was not the right thing to do. But do you blame him? The man that he's been following, that he believed was the Messiah, that he couldn't even wrap his mind around the idea that they were gonna take his beloved Jesus away. He had to do something. And yeah, he messed up, but at least he did something. And then lastly, Jesus goes to this mountain earlier on in Matthew. And he takes kind of his inner circle. He takes Peter up there and a few others. And, 
It says he was transformed before them and his, his clothes and his appearance just turned white. And all of a sudden there's Elijah and there's Moses, two prophets and a, a prophet and a leader that are gone and dead. And all of a sudden they appear and they're talking to Jesus. And you know what Peter does? Peter says, oh my goodness, I gotta do something. I gotta do something. My Messiah is here. The, the prophet I've read about for years that proclaimed the coming of my king is here. Moses, the man who led my people out of slavery is here. I have to do something. So he looked at Jesus and he goes, Jesus, let's build three temples. Let's stay here forever. One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. And that day, Peter built two too many temples. But he had to do something. He wasn't right, but he did something in response. So today, here we are on this mountain, right? We've, we've just seen Jesus different than we've ever seen him before. And a lot of, a lot of us are thinking, I don't want to leave here. Like, I want to sit in this moment forever. At the end of that passage, this is what it says. It says, and then they went down the mountain. It's kind of sad, right? So let me tell you something. We're not built for the mountains. I got a picture for you. Do you have that back there? There it is. All right, why don't you look at this picture closely with me. Mountains, when I think of them, and when every child draws one, it's a big triangle with rocks or snow on it. That, that mountain doesn't look very fruitful to me. I, don't, I feel like there's not a lot of growth on that mountain. I feel like there's not a lot of anything. But that valley there now, let me tell you something. Every bit of water that's in that valley came from that mountaintop. Every bit of growth that's in that valley came because of what was poured out on top of the mountain and it trickled its way down into fertile soil. And that's where you're going. You're on this mountaintop and we're not built for that yet. And that's okay. We should enjoy every moment of it. We should look at Jesus and say, God, I don't want to leave here. I want to stay here forever. But the reality is we are built for the valleys. Your friends and your family are fertile soil that you can take what God has poured out on this mountain and down into that valley. That's where you're built for. That's where the growth is. That's where life is. You can't stay here. But here's what we can do. We can take in every moment that we have left on this mountain in order to pour out and trickle down every bit of it into the valleys. So this is just my, my invitation to you. We're just gonna sing the rest of the song and one more song. And whatever it may be that you've been thinking, oh, you know what, I'm just gonna wait this one out. You don't wanna go back to the valley with nothing to bring because then it feels like a valley. But if you can go back to that valley with all that God has poured out here. So the question is, what are you gonna do? I'm not worried about what you're gonna do in the valley. Micah is gonna talk about that in a second. I wanna know what you're gonna do while you're on this mountaintop. How are you going to position yourself to receive all that God would have for you on this mountain? Some of you, it might be uncomfortable for you. Some of you, it might be that you need to grab a friend and you need to go pray. You need to grab a friend, you need to ask forgiveness. You need to, to go to your leader and say, I need to call my mom and say, I'm sorry because I left in a bitter situation. Some of you need to say, you know what? For the first time in my life, I'm gonna listen to David the time and time again and Proverbs time and time again and all these Psalms and all these scriptures says, I'm gonna lift my hands to the Lord. And you're gonna actually raise your hands for the first time and it's gonna be this like, feel like a thousand pound weight is on it. But you're gonna realize when my son walks up to me and he needs his father, the first thing he does is goes. Some of you are for the first time in your life gonna actually get on your knees and pray and realize that you come before a high king and not just this conversation that we have throughout the Bible Belt about this guy named Jesus. Cause all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing.
great are you, Lord. Tell of his greatness. Great are you, Lord. Heavens. Great. 